great grandfather was a railroad worker in Nebraska. Every morning he would creep from his bed like a cold sweat to greet the dawn, his hands still blackened by ash from the night before, skin as brown as the dirt he used to plot his tracks. Back when the men in my family still made love in Spanish, before the machines came and made quick work of his legacy, there was he, a pair of calloused hands, the molten soldering of iron and steel cut fingers and furrowed brow, a procession of blows striking metal like thunder. Every morning, my great-grandfather hammered the salt of a sweat into railroad tracks like a signature. He knew that this was a nothing town and that these tracks were just a detour on the way to somewhere more important. He couldn't speak a word of English, but his hammer understood the braille hidden beneath the steel. My great-grandfather spoke the language of pluming smoke, the rising whistle of steam, his tongue, a rough flint, every word, an orange spark. He found God in the middle of nowhere, Kansas and the way the sun made love to the prairies, and the whistle of passing trains. This is how he met my great-grandmother, a dry corn husk of a woman as frail and flammable as they come. That summer, she fell in love with a man made of sparks, my great-grandfather, the man who smiled like matches. He had one for each of his 12 children, loved them all the way that coal burned. You see, his hands were hot enough to scald metal, so his hands were hot enough to scald his children. My great-grandfather set fire to everything he touched, left embers in his wake, set the floor bloody and ablaze, a wooden house full of children with a flash fire for a father. I don't know whether it was the drinking or the schizophrenia that soldered his mind shut, but once the smoke had no place to escape, his eyes became a flurry of black smog. He could no longer hold back the steam that boiled in the furnace of his throat, so he boarded up the windows, took the biggest belt in the drawer, lined each of his children out like railroad tracks, and beat them like the molten soldering of iron and steel, beat them like a procession of blows striking metal like thunder. Every night, my great-grandfather hammered the salt of his sweat into his children like railroad tracks, like a signature, like branding cattle, the way a ravenous flame devours a countryside, the crackle of a pot, the boil of a furnace, a slow controlled burn of a childhood raised in a house of falling ashes. My grandmother's burns have faded into scars that match her complexion. If you weren't looking closely, you would never know that she once danced with fire. My mother still scolds her fingers on the stove out of habit. She cannot close her eyes without seeing a silhouette of black smoke in the shape of my father. Sometimes my temper flares so hot, I can see my mother start to wilt in front of me. My voice carries enough steam to see your arguments in half with the kind of insults you have to love someone to learn how to use. My partners have all been afraid of me. They know all too often how easily I combust. I have a blowtorch temper that sears through even the thickest of flesh, and no one is safe. There is something flammable about the men in my family. The heredity of this dull flame we keep locked inside the crucible of our chests. How easily we set fire to the ones we love. I can't help but wonder who'll be the next to burn.